Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. Aishimo of Madison is a Democratic candidate in the 26th Senate District. The primary is August 11th. Aisha, thanks for joining Wisconsin Eye. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Um, I want to give you a chance to identify, I talk about uh, quickly, a couple issues that you've identified in social media is very important. Then we'll, list, then we'll come to a list of our questions. Um, so talk to me about why student debt and LGBTQ plus liberation plan are important priorities for you. All right. Uh, in regards to that first issue, uh, the student debt crisis is something that has burdened our state in particular. Uh, Wisconsin is a state that has a huge deficit in our workforce between the ages of 22 and 40. And the reason being because huge amounts of student debt cause people to go to larger cities or different states in order to pay back their loans. People aren't making decisions based upon bettering the Wisconsin workforce when they're trying to figure out whether or not they can afford their rent because their student debt payments are so high every single month. Well, there's, there's a bill in the Capitol that would let students refinance student debt. Are you talking about passing that bill or do you have other ideas on student debt, Aisha? There was a bill that I believe was done by Senator Larson that specifically talked about if a student graduated from a UW school, stayed in Wisconsin, and worked and lived in Wisconsin for three years, their debts would be forgiven. And I'm thinking that something that extreme is what we're needing in order to make sure that our workforce is vibrant and alive. Okay, and why is an important another important priority LGBTQ plus, uh, you have a liberation plan, please. Absolutely, I think that uh, right now, we do, specifically in Madison, have a lot of liberal uh, viewpoints, and we are very supportive of the LGBTQ plus community, but there are specific issues that affect this community that take more than just passive support. We need to actually be making sure that we're deconstructing, uh, making it illegal to do conversion therapy, which is currently illegal in Dane County, but not across the state of Wisconsin. Um, it, um, we also in Wisconsin have what's called the LGBTQ plus panic defense, which legally makes it so that upon the disclosure of someone's sexual orientation or identity, it, it's, an, it's basically pardons or excuses a, an assault on that person. And while logistically people would not want that to happen, the fact that it's still the letter of the law is disgusting for Wisconsin. And so these things need to be actively deconstructed. And then on top of that, another priority that I have in my LGBTQ plus liberation plan, which is available on my website to read in full, is about guaranteeing housing for LGBTQ plus youth. 60% uh, of youth who are homeless identify as a member of the LGBTQ plus community. There's a specific population of people that have unique uh, issues they're being faced with when they are being kicked out of their homes based upon their sexual orientation and identity. And this is something that can't be sweeped under the rug and we can't just have a pride parade and fix it. We need to actively make sure we're guaranteeing housing that supports those people. Okay, thank you very much. Let, let's go to some more general questions. Um, what if tax collections in the, in the new year that begins on Wednesday fall $2 billion, as the governor has warned they might because of the COVID crisis? Would you cut spending on some of the major programs or would you raise taxes, Aisha? Um, I think in general, I would take a stance of both, um, both raising taxes to recognize that right now we need to take support for our community. And that requires that those of us who can give do give to those who are in need right now. Um, secondly, I do think that there are some projects that Wisconsin is taking on. For instance, Foxconn, which is a disgusting waste of money. I'm sorry, that's very harsh, which is uh, 
is not helpful ultimately in the long term because it uh, provides funding um, to an international organization as opposed to keeping jobs local here. Okay, thank you. The next lines, the next boundary lines for congressional, Senate, and Assembly uh, districts. Right now, the uh, Constitution says they must be drawn by the party in power in the Capitol. The governor wants to create a People's Commission that would propose these new district boundaries, then forward it to the legislators to enact. Um, what, which process is best? Uh, definitely the second one. I support Tony, uh, Governor Tony Evers' choice to create a nonpartisan organization that creates uh, fair maps, and then having that, those maps be the ones that are passed through the legislature. Thank you. Um, do you support medical marijuana and recreational marijuana? I support recreational marijuana, legalized and taxed and regulated. Okay. We know a lot now as Americans, a lot more about how police conduct themselves uh, than, we do, than we did two months ago. Here's my question. Do we need statewide standards for how police treat those in custody? For example, do we need a standard that would ban chokeholds, ban no-knock warrants, keep a database of officers most prone to violence? Um, the nine bill package that, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes and, uh, Governor Tony Evers just, uh, created, I think is a very good start towards bettering our policing system in this country, er, in this state, pardon me. Um, but I also think that we need across the country, a movement towards community control over policing. There are issues where community members such as social workers or educators and funding those uh, programs that they are running would be a better resource than say uh, putting cops in schools, for instance. Okay. Um, uh, two questions on property taxes. Wisconsin has some of the highest property taxes in the nation, which is why schools and local governments, what they can levy in property taxes are capped or limited. Schools and governments can, of course, exceed the caps through referendums. My question is, if you're elected as a senator, would you vote to keep property tax caps uh, or limits in, in place or get rid of them? Um, I think that when we're talking about funding for local schools um, and social services, it's important to recognize that when it's based off of local property taxes solely, um, it creates a classist and honestly segregated community. Um, people are able to move to a place where they agree with the property taxes more and then funding gets moved around based upon the specific value of any one property. And I take the stance that people are more important than property. And that's why I would actually suggest that we kind of redo how we're funding these things and actually have a state pool of money which can be allocated based upon need and not based upon so the, the richest families in any one community. How would you raise money for your state pool of money, Asia? Um, that would be, uh, I think, through the, sim the similar um, process as it is right now, but instead of going directly to local schools, it would go to a state pool first and then back to local schools. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh Yep. Follow-up question on property taxes. Counties and local governments rely on the property tax to pay for 40% of their services. That's the seventh highest number in the nation, 10 percentage points higher than any other Midwest state. One reason they must rely on property tax is the lack of alternative revenue options. My question, is it time for alternative revenue sources? For example, broadening our 5% sales tax to now exempt products and services to be considered? Yeah, I think we should definitely be looking at every avenue for um, increasing revenue through taxes when we're going to be taking on huge projects that will ultimately empower people. Does that include raising the gas tax? 30.9 cents a gallon hasn't been increased in 10 years. Is, is that something you, you, you could support? Yes, I would support a gas tax. I think um, I personally would also consider carbon taxing in, um, in a different conversation. I'm not an expert in it, but I do know that it is an option that's available and has been used in other, like, uh, other areas. Sorry, I, I was going to say states, but the place I'm thinking of is actually in Canada, so it's not. Okay. 
Yeah. As I interview candidates for the legislature from Madison, the topic of F-35s comes up. Uh, do you have a position um, on whether the F-35s, the expansion should be based at Truax Field here in Madison? Uh, um, the hardest part about that is that it was a decision that was made without the local input from Madisonians. And that's what's really hard about it. It was a decision that was made by our federal government. A lot of money was spent on building these very fancy planes. And if we had had the option of saying, let's not spend this money on this program and spend it in other ways, at the time that they were making that decision, it would have been uh, a lot more of an empowering and more of an inclusive process. Where we're at right now, I know that there's a lot of challenge with people saying that uh, it'll create an environmental impact, which is horrendous and should definitely be managed. And there should be funding to make sure that we're managing the environmental impact of having the F-35s here. And, and there are already promises and to people in our community to have jobs related to this mission. And I understand that we can't just let that go and let those people who have jobs associated with that mission uh, like just completely have nothing there. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Two questions on COVID-19. The first one, should businesses mm -hmm. that follow all prescribed COVID-19 practices and recommendations be immune from frivolous lawsuits? Aisha. Um, I definitely think if, they're, if you're following every single... Um, Every single regulation that's been put into the T, um, and you have a lawsuit that is um, arguably frivolous, um, there should be a process to making sure that you don't have to pay all of the legal fees required to put that lawsuit away. But I also don't want to change that as a metric for consumers to be able to really call out corporations or businesses that are harming them. So it should be a tool that's available, but also recognizing that it is expensive for some uh, companies to, to go through that as well. Okay, second COVID question. It's the pandemic has hit the economy and the healthcare providers the state relies on especially hard. Recessions cause less revenues that we talked about, but more demands for safety net programs like Medicaid. If you're a senator, you'd be voting on the next state budget. Should that budget make hospitals a greater priority? Um, I think healthcare in general should be made a great, greater priority. Um, I'm a supporter of Medicare for all, which it would be at the federal level. And as a state senator, I would advocate that our partners at the federal level really push for Medicare for all. But until that becomes a reality, I recognize that there are people right now, because we didn't accept the Medicaid expansion, who don't have access to healthcare. And that should be, like, we should accept the Medicaid expansion. Okay, uh, new subject. A, a study said in 2015, out-of-state contractors were awarded $72 million in public work pro works projects by local governments. That amount more than doubled to $146 million in 2018. The question is, should bidding standards and requirements give preference or priorities to Wisconsin companies? Is that something you've had a chance to think about? Um, I don't think I had the chance to think about it, um, but what I can say right now is that I, I value um, the work that unions do, and I think it's really important that any conversation about how contracts are awarded fits in with people who are participating in a union, so we're not undercutting the work that people are doing within our state, and we're pulling each other up. Okay, now let's go back to two other uh, issues that you identify in your uh, social media. Uh, talk to me about your plan to address climate change and social justice, please. Uh, we've, got, we've got a couple minutes left. Okay, very quickly. Um, so in regards to climate change, um, I am somebody who supports a Wisconsin Green New Deal. Um, one very specific thing that I think we could do right away that I think would have support from um, both sides of the aisle is taking money that's currently being invested um, for the state pension program into fossil fuels, taking that money and investing it in honestly anything else. But my hope is that we can take that same money and invest it in renewable energy and the, the construction and the manufacturing of renewable energy sources, whether that be solar or wind. 
And then in regards to social justice, Please. I'm somebody who believes that social justice is at the core of everything I do. Um, I think it is one of the most important issues of our, of our time right now. Um, and there's so much that can be done, but three things right off the bat that I can think of that I would want to be focusing on are police, a complete rework of the policing and criminal justice system in Wisconsin to focus on people. Um, the ending of the voucher school system, which I believe has ultimately been created by people who want to continue a legacy of segregation. Um, and lastly, by creating affordable, guaranteed affordable housing for everyone. I think those three areas are spaces where a lot could be managed. It won't fix everything. And I definitely think the communities that are affected should be the first ones to have the conversation or a seat at the table to discuss these issues. Does your program on social justice include the calls to dramatically reduce the number of prison inmates, Aisha? Yes, uh, it does. Who would you let out of prison? <sighs> um, I definitely think that right now there is a certain, I apologize, I don't know what all the words are, but right now there's a system in which someone who is um, out, recently out of prison has a certain amount of restrictions on them, which include not being able to uh, fraternize with uh uh, former felons or people who have, uh, and they're not allowed to drink and they're not allowed to do drugs. And um, this is outside of a parole. Like it, whether or not you have completed your parole, you also have to do this certain amount of time that's required in Wisconsin state law. And a lot of people get tripped up because either someone in their family is, is a felon and so they can't fraternize with a felon and so now they're not even allowed to go to a local community barbecue or go to their mom's house because their brother's a felon, whatever it is. Um, and those situations where they get caught and thrown back into prison is something that's completely arbitrary, has nothing to do with the original crime they committed and ultimately doesn't treat drug addiction like an addiction. It treats it like a bad that will go away with something without treatment, which is not true. Um, so I think that restructuring the way we treat uh, drug addiction is one way, and then restructuring how we treat people who recently gotten out of prison is two ways in which we can reduce the prison population. And then my final question, what um, the, the 26th Senate is an open seat. Talk to me about the differences between you and the other candidates, why are you most qualified to be the next senator from the 26th, please? <laughs> I would say that what separates me from the other candidates is the fact that I have a vision for Wisconsin and a vision for Madison. I think Wisconsin is a place where we used to have a lot of progressive ideas. Like we used to be a stronghold in progressivism and we've taken a step back and I want to return Wisconsin to being a place that other states are pulling policies from and wanting to create with and collaborate with. Um, and for Madison, I think that Madison's an amazing city to live in if you're a white person in a white family. And we have to recognize that there are racial disparities that exist in Dane County. One of the highest infant mortality rates for black infants. That's something that we need to address and take ownership of. And I'm here to call it out and have a conversation that will push us forward. Thank you. Aisha Mo of Madison is a Democratic candidate in the 26th Senate District. The primary election is August 11th. Aisha, thank you so much for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.